If I could go back to a past version of me a few years ago and I would tell her you have three wishes, ask for anything that you want, I really think one of my answers back then would have been I want to struggle less with my negative thoughts because at that point I felt like my thoughts were affecting so much of my happiness and my ability to do what I wanted to do in life but somehow I had also started to believe that this was just something I had to accept like it was what it was and so I could only wish or hope for that to change but there was nothing that I could actually do. I wish I could go back to that past version of me and say no that is not true of course negative thoughts are part of life in a way but there are so many things you can do to improve you do not need to just accept this the way it is and so that's what I wanted to Talk about today. I wanted to share two simple things that have really helped me stop my negative thoughts, meaning to not believe them so much, to not have them affect so much of my life and what I want to do, because I think in the past, I never thought it was possible to be where I am today. And I guess these are some things that helped me get here. Before we start, as always, if you enjoy my content, feel free to support it in some way, such as liking, commenting, subscribing, or leaving a review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Step one for me is always to remember that just because I am having a negative thought doesn't mean that it's true or that it actually reflects reality. Because I think in the past I used to think whatever I am thinking or feeling must be true, otherwise why would I think or feel it? So if my mind is telling me that I am not good at anything, that's because it's actually true and almost as if that thought feels shitty because it's making me face the reality of how truly I am not good at anything but that is just so far from reality it's not even funny. Your thoughts are not always true and the reason that they hurt is not because they are true but also 100 people can tell you that if you don't know that for yourself it's not gonna work and so from my experience, a very effective way to stop negative thoughts from running your life is really to take action against those negative thoughts. Almost do enough things and gather enough evidence to prove to yourself that those thoughts are not true so that you start to see that for yourself. Everyone struggles with negative thoughts. I mean, to different degrees, of course, but I really don't know one person who never has any negative thoughts about themselves or their life. But I think the difference is people who are controlled and run by their negative thoughts, they really believe them to be true. And so they never even take any action against those thoughts to see for themselves that they might not be true. Meanwhile, people who are not controlled and run by their thoughts, they might still have those negative thoughts, but they are committed to to taking action against those thoughts so that they can see for themselves that they are not true because they don't want their life and actions to be run by thoughts that half of the time are not even true. I'm not saying that I have this figured out entirely at all but one example from my life where I really felt the power of this approach was that I felt for a long time my negative thoughts were really stopping me also from doing more of the things that I wanted to do and more of the things that I knew would make me happy and again they still do at times but one area of my life that I really managed to turn around through this was actually this podcast in a way because I wanted to start this way before I actually started it but for a long time I just felt like I had all of these negative thoughts and fears and doubts that were stopping me from actually taking the steps that I wanted to take in my life. Obviously, now I'm doing this podcast, meaning now I'm doing something that used to be so hard for me to even grasp that I would one day even start it because of my negative thoughts. And so recently I was talking to someone and this person also felt like they were struggling to take steps they wanted to take because of negative thoughts. And so this person was asking me, well, what did you do to get rid of those negative thoughts so that you could actually do what you wanted to do? And when I thought about it, I realized I never actually really did. Like there was never a point where those negative thoughts were not there anymore. And then I was able to do what I wanted to do. That point never happened. 
Honestly, to this day, sometimes I still have those same negative thoughts and fears and doubts that I had back then that tell me that this is not a good idea or it's not good or whatever the stories are in the mind. The only difference is that now I spend like one and a half, two years with this podcast doing enough things and taking enough action to prove to myself that those thoughts are not true and not a true reflection of who I really am and what I really am capable of. And so from my experience, I really had to take the action first to see for myself that those thoughts are not always true. Only then did they have less of a hold on me. So if your thoughts are telling you nobody cares about what you have to say, go out there and share what you believe in until you realize for you, for yourself that thought is not true. Or if your thoughts are telling you that you're not good at anything, go out there and get better at what you do until you realize those thoughts are not true. Or if your thoughts are telling you nobody likes you, go out there and meet people until you realize for yourself that those thoughts are not a true reflection of reality or who you are or what you are truly capable of. From my experience, there is no one video you watch or one book you read or one thing you finally understand and that will change the relationship you have with your thoughts. In my experience, it really just is these small steps of action that you take every day and eventually you arrive at a place that is so different from where you actually started. But it really takes that commitment to those steps every day for that to actually happen. And so this might not be the easiest or laziest approach, but in my experience, it truly has been the most effective. I used to think that my negative thoughts were all my fault. It was all on me. It didn't have anything to do with anyone. I was the problem. And of course, a big part of this was for me to figure out, like we just talked about. But also another big part of the journey for me was to realize that that was not all it was because otherwise how do I explain to myself that I started to feel so much better and my negative thoughts improved so much once I stopped spending time with certain kinds of people and once I left certain environments that were just not good for me. Our thoughts are a result of how we feel about ourselves, but they are also a result of our environment. And I think by not taking that aspect seriously and always saying, oh, it's me, it's me, I'm the problem, it's me, we are really taking on much more responsibility than we actually should be carrying at times. It always reminds me of this quote, which I think all of us have heard so many times and it's almost a bit cheesy, but at the same time, it is just so, so true. And it's when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. For example, if you struggle with thoughts that are telling you that you are not good enough and every day then you go to work and you work for someone who continuously makes you feel like you're not good enough, those thoughts are going to get worse. Or if you feel like nobody likes you and you're too much and then you are in a relationship where that person continuously makes you feel like nobody likes you and you're too much, those thoughts will get worse. Or if you feel like um, you are stupid and then you spend time with that friend who always makes you feel stupid, then those thoughts are going to get worse. And that's okay because our environment has an impact on us and how we feel about ourselves. It's human and normal to be affected by our environment and I don't think we always need to strive to be these superhumans and these people who are so confident that nothing and no one can break us because we're just so strong in ourselves because I think for most people that is just not realistic and again that's totally okay. And it's really tricky because from my experience, when you are in these environments or with people who really make you feel shit about yourself and make your negative thoughts even worse, in that moment, you don't realize how much of what you are feeling and thinking about yourself isn't actually yours. Like you really start to feel these things about yourself, thinking that they are true. And that's why your environment is just reflecting them back to you. You don't realize how much of that is not you until 
you get out of that environment, that's when you realize, oh my God, I am not perfect, but I actually don't feel these things about myself. I actually don't think these things about my life. That is not me. That was my environment. I have had so many ups and downs and ups and downs when it comes to struggling with negative thoughts. And so much of that was just my own stuff and for me to figure out and no one else was to blame for that. But at the same time, I have never myself hit the kind of lows that I have hit when I was in environments that were just so, so not good for me. And of course, it is not always possible to control our life and every area of our life all the time. There are aspects that we don't have so much control over and that's life, such as maybe family at times or work or jobs, whatever life brings. But I can really just say, try to be selective about your environment as much as you can. Look at every area of your life that you do have control over and remember that you are allowed to feel good. Meaning say no to that friend who wants to meet if every time you meet you feel shit about yourself. Leave that relationship that makes you feel shit about yourself. Change that job that makes you feel shit about yourself if it's possible. I know it's not always easy but it is always so, so, so worth it. And so if I could go back to that past version of me a few years ago, I would say, okay, you definitely need to do some more things and gather some more tools and knowledge to figure this out because this is for you to figure out and that way there is no one to blame for that. But at the same time, let's take you out of your environment for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then let's see how you feel about yourself and your life. And I think that would have shifted my perspective more than than anything else. All right, everyone, that is all I wanted to share for today. Also, if you are interested, I made a recent episode on where our negative thoughts come from in the first place. And so I guess this is kind of a part two to that episode or in a way they are connected. And so if you are interested in that, I will leave that link down below or otherwise it is episode 30. If you are listening on Spotify or anything like that, you want to find it easier. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank you so much. And I'm so looking forward to connecting with you in my next episode.